Hi, uh, welcome to my little shed. I moved here a couple of years ago. Any of you who have already seen my gardening videos will know that I had a huge house fire two, two and a half years ago. And well, you know how fires, just everything went kaput, all gone. So I came here to Dartington and I, I live in a little cottage here. Uh, the garden wasn't much of a garden, but I've begun to make it into a typical cottage garden. And in that little garden is this shed. It isn't finished yet. It has only got temporary windows. So there's going to be some nice changes taking place. And it's where I work. So for the time being, I'm going to call it the shed. When it's finished, maybe we'll call it the studio. Sounds a little posher. Um, I've been doing papier mache for 25 years. I did my degree in fine art. I had a dream one night and I showed my paintings to this lady and she said to me, Oh, why don't you chop your paintings up and turn them into little bits and make each one into a brooch? And I thought, what a silly idea. And I woke up in the morning and thought, what a silly idea. By 11 o'clock, I thought to myself, hmm, maybe there's some mileage in it. Let's have a go. So I began to break them into little pieces, cut them up, fragments, and I turned them into pieces of jewellery. And that was it. Everyone loved them. So I carried on doing it. I was never intending to be a jeweller. I don't even really wear jewellery. But they do make nice little bits of um, of work that I, I travel about. I paint and I take photographs. And when I come back, you can't really see that, can you? I'll show you later. Um, I cut them up into bits. I add a lot of um, other things like oil pastel and gold and silver leaf and finally coat them with resin. But I also have spent a long time making papier-mâché. I've done all sorts of objets d'art, I've had a go at making furniture, I've made lots and lots of bowls, I've loved using um, chalk and beeswax and all sorts of things. I try anything and everything. And my recent um, passion is the stuff. It's um, a very fine air-dried papier-mâché paste and it's just like porcelain. Years and years ago when I was teaching, I did teach for a little while, um, I used to roll my balls up, balls of porcelain clay that was, squidge them out a bit like that so they kind of cracked, take something like a fir cone and stick them into it and end up with something like that. Then I would um, you know, use a bit of pipe, make a hole and put them to dry. What I do nowadays is I put them onto um, a piece of glass and I pop them into this little cabinet which is brilliant. It's a wooden box with a heat lamp in one corner and I also put a propagating tray in it because it just gives off a gentle heat and overnight all stuff dries out beautifully so the next day I can carry on painting. Now this is a bit of a rambly old video, so I'm going to just take you through a few of the things that I'm going to be doing and we'll do them, make a little one by one video. I have just discovered, and I'm sure everybody else knows about it, this amazing stuff called Silly Gum. It is quite expensive and I have now found a place where I can get something in bulk for, I think, a better price. Because having used it this last week, I think I just want to go around pressing anything into it. It's incredible stuff. It comes as a two-part paste, a blue and a white epoxy paste. You mix them together and then you press stuff into it. This is a, a kind of a what was a seed head that's dried which I must have picked up on my travels. I've got bowls full of stuff like that which I pressed in and then look beautiful little mould which gives me one of these. That's it. That will be the first, um, the first thing to do. We'll turn it into a pendant or maybe into a brooch and put perhaps French sepia ink and gold leaf and see how it goes with that. I have got a collection of, these are magnolia seed pods and I like it. They dry to wood. They're lovely. 
I don't, didn't quite know what to do with them. There's loads of things I could do, I suppose. But again, pressing it in, and you get this. Beautiful little things. They're really beautiful. Endless possibilities. Down on the beach, I discovered I've got bowls and buckets of stones. This is a little kind of heart-shaped stone affair, but it's covered in barnacles. And I thought, again, I hadn't any idea what to do. I mean, I've been collecting this stuff for years, and now I've found this stuff. It's a silly gum. <laughs> it's great fun. So press it in as so. Out it comes, a really textured base, out of which I can make endless of these. Again, I don't know what I'm going to do quite. I've just made a little bit of a silver, sterling silver wire bale on them. Um, it's all a bit amateurish. Amateurish isn't a problem. We all learn and uh, just keep going. That's my advice to anyone. Look, that was on the floor. It's a beer cap, old old beer thingy, metal beer cap, which has been pounded to death on the road and millions of footprints and things and gone rusty. And I just saw something beautiful in it and pressed it into there. And out came lots and lots of these. Aren't they gorgeous? Now they can be turned into a necklace, I suppose. We'll see. Um, oh yes, when I go to London, um, I always make some time to go down on the River Thames on the embankment at low tide because somewhere near the British Film Institute area, down that part, there's loads and loads of things to be found. Now, I'm not a registered mudlark, but anyone's allowed to go down and take these things, which are just um, hundreds and hundreds of tiny little bits of clay pipe and I think they're really really beautiful and would make some form of necklace, brooches, bangles, whatever. However, I've taken it a one step further and I've got some um, bits of this clay, rolled it into a ball, maybe just push it a paintbrush. I generally use a wooden kebab stick but this will do. So, as so, a bit thinner, take a blade and cut off and cut and cut, take off the excess on either end, and then we've got two little, quite rough pieces of air dried porcelain. Leave them to dry. Ah, some I did earlier. <laughs> Here we go. In a nice old oyster shell, which can also be made into something later. These are gorgeous, and I've also stuck um, little bits of um, clay on the edge just to give them a bit more interest. And I've painted them with resin, which is kind of soaked in a bit, and so it's impervious to water. They've got a little sound, and some of them. I have strung onto a piece of silver wire. This is not finished, but it gives you this sort of idea. Um, so I'm going to, they may stay white or they may, they may be slightly painted. Um, these little things in the middle here are beads that I'll show you how I make. There's a product called Tyvek, which I've only really just found out about. Loads of people have been making beads with it. And it's, I think it's the kind of waterproof um, windproof barrier that they put um, on overalls when people are working in dirty places. I think they use it in for sails, in sailing sometimes, and wrapping up round buildings and inside nappy liners. It goes from very delicate to really strong. And if I tear it into strips and I wrap it round a kebab stick and then heat it with a heat gun, none of which I've got to hand but I will show you, it shrinks and it goes towards its plastic form. It's biodegradable, but for a long time we can have brilliant necklaces out of it. And then what I do is I take this lovely iridescent tissue and I rip it into bits, like so. Or I probably make them very neat. And I wrap it around the bead, as it were, that's still on the kebab stick, and I heat it and it all shrinks in. 
and it just looks absolutely fantastic. I wish you could see the iridescence in that, you probably can't, but it is just like big pearls, beautiful. And there's a real quality to it, so there's a lot of mileage there yet to be discovered. All sorts of things can go into this silly gum. Bits of bark, look that one's already got a hole in. Um, this is one I haven't yet done. It's a really, really eroded base of an aluminium drinks can. But that's going to be lovely. Um, I've also made rings with another thing I like to use, which is called Modrock. Well, I call it Modrock. Actually, I don't know what it's called. It used to be called Modrock. It used to be sold in shops that sold Play-Doh and things like that. It's a, a gauze. I know it's used, used to be used in hospitals and um, probably isn't any longer. It's soaked in Plage of Paris and if you are to cut it up into bits um, and wet it, sort of like that, it rapidly, that's got green paint on, that's not very good, it doesn't matter. So splodge a bit of water onto that and it will go hard. And then what you can do is take some of, oh, I'm always losing stuff, I have to get another lump <laughs> of this um, porcelain clay and spread it along the top like that. That really does look amateurish. And then there's a piece of wire. Again, I've, you know, all these gorgeous little bits and pieces. It's, so, it's strong and really quite beautiful. Press that into it like so and leave it to dry. And there's one I made earlier, as they say. Now what I'm going to do is coat it with silver leaf and I'm going to put it in a box and I'm going to boil a couple of eggs. I've got lots of chickens out here. Hard boil the eggs, chop the eggs in half, stick them in the box with the brooch and then put it somewhere warm. An airing cupboard is good. I'll probably put it into my little magic cabinet and in the morning the patina on the silver will start to develop. So instead of just being pure silver, it will start to go through these processes of, of sort of rainbow colours and bronzes and sepias and greens and purples and it will look really, really lovely. And at that point, I can then coat it with resin. Resin, I use it quite a lot. I, you know, I use it on top of, of this. I also um, have been making tiny little uh, flowery shapes like this. By taking tissue paper and just turning it into little squares and then taking my remarkable stuff and I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it here but I'll give you a demonstration later smearing it on to the tissue paper all the way around and then some of them I've ripped and stuck together again and formed. Some are flat like that and some are more delicately flower shaped. You know, like a little... Not sure what to do. You know, it really doesn't matter when you're making things if you know what you're going to do with them later on. Because the more things you do, the more ideas come, the more imagination plays, you see things, you think, oh, I'll try a bit of that. Somehow or other, it all comes together in the end. I've also, on some of them, taking it a step further and I've coated the back with resin so the back of it is really quite hard see and on the other side it's still beautifully white pasty matte which will absorb colours I used a lot of acrylic inks actually and it and also gold and silver leaf so that is something to develop one of the things it's nice to do is add is bangles. Now this is made by um, wrapping modrock round, I think I used an empty yoghurt carton. Anyhow, it's basically the size of my wrist. I've got quite large hands and I have to say not manicured nails. My nails are really practical nails. They have to do a lot. 
and so you can take after the mod rock is dried you can take this paper pulp and start to press it in you can see the possibilities there it gives it weight when it's dry you can scratch into it you can gouge into it you can press things into it you can press press these into it it can add all sorts of textures to it give it back to dry and then paint it and gild it um what else have i got oh yes look mod rock just this is going to be you won't be able to see that i don't think but it's going to be a brooch at the moment it's just a rough square with texture but to me there's a whole world in there and i shall bring it out with with color i do like to use a lot of really bright colors actually but at the moment i seem to be completely fascinated by this sepia and this um lovely kind of terpsy smelling oil based gilders paste it comes in silver and copper and bronze and the sort of pale gold and it's used in all sorts of ways i've also started fiddling around with fimo or fimo or whatever you call it and i started mixing my own colors as well by adding um acrylic ink into it only in small quantities um and then leaving it out to dry so that there are no air pockets of whatever but that's another story and i think uh, there's going to be a whole series of little tutorials here of things i can share with you these are just mod rock wrapped around old paintbrushes but when they're gilded and painted they can be hung up as pendants what else have i got because i know i have some very interesting shapes oh yes look. this are these are different again but very similar for pendants one is very textural and this one can maybe have calligraphy in and gold on top there is so many parts to do so many possibilities um i spent years and years making um making these actually um i don't know if you can see just basically um, this is what I've done, resin, painted images set in silver anodized aluminium and covered in resin. Um, I won't be doing any tutorials on those because I have the aluminium um, trays as it were made and it's a completely different story but what I can do is also show you how I've made beads and all my papier-mâché jewellery too. I think it's really good to share ideas. I'm a great believer in copyright. I mean copyleft. Do you know there's a whole there's a, a there's a whole kind of raft of, of people who really want to share their ideas and they're not at all into copyright, they're into what is called copyleft, which is a sort of free sharing of ideas. The imagination needs to have complete access, so the more you share, the more comes in the more there is to give. So, see you in the next video and we will start on a series of maybe natural forms on the silly gum. You don't have to use a silly gum, remember, because you can just take a piece of this and press something into it. Okay, see you later. Bye.